Hello, and welcome back to another video watching me struggle my way through this game. Last time out we ended our first colony due to a war killing off Blitz and Bradley, alongside Reynolds failing to recruit any new survivors as we didn't have the option to recruit on. It wasn't the best start to Rimworld but I did learn a couple of things and with all the comments on the video leaving me some new tips and tricks, I'm ready to head back into the Rim. I promise you somewhat of a better showing this time around. But without further ado, let's jump straight back in. So, the usual jargon starting up a new colony, Randy was selected along with our adventure story difficulty and we decided we were going to run with the same seed to try and get back into the same area. I believe a bit of continuity will help as we continue to learn the game. I'm not 100% sure but I'm sure you will correct me if I'm wrong, because we picked the same seed we get the same survivors, so to spice it up a little bit we hit the randomise button once on each of them. Our three new survivors are Mulligan, who looks quite the character in my opinion, Quick Sleeper, has a passion in a number of skills including craft crafting and medical and intellectual. Chef, who let me tell you right now is not a chef, again has a passion for construction, also with plants and art. And finally Bowman, an extremely good shooter with a high passion and a high level in intellectual. She does have a major artery blockage in the heart though which doesn't seem like a good thing to me. For a starting group they seem pretty strong apart from the cooking but we'll work that one out as we go. Now, as we land, I can tell you we've removed the black bars, a beautiful full screen feed to see everything that goes on. For anybody wondering, my resolution was a little bit on the small side, and I'm also attempting to get used to my middle mouse wheel for the camera to give a smoother viewing experience. After a little look around the map, we noticed what looks to be another ancient danger close by. More on that one in a second. We gave the starter weapons out to the group. Obviously, Bowman was given the rifle due to a high level in shooting. Mulligan was given the revolver, and Chef had to settle for his little stabber. I'm not sure if it's the right choice, but but Bowman was also forced to wear the starting armour that crashed down with us. But back to that ancient danger. My initial urge was to send everybody over and investigate, and to break down the wall to find out what was inside. Once I received the pop-up though, I decided against it as my fear of that phrase may contain a great danger, I decided to squirm away. It was time to begin construction on the new base, this time I had to put a little bit of planning into it though. Not quite as much as how big things were going to be and where they were going to go, but from the last episode, I know I need to keep my survivors happy and minimalise them breaks. We started with three bedrooms and a communal area for the group to eat and chill out in. That was then amended by two tiles as I wanted to centralise the door, but I failed miserably. We decided to run with it though and add the door over to the left hand side. We had another play around with the work screen, something that I was a little bit more familiar with now. And then we added two larger rooms to the side of the communal area. These will be our storage areas for any junk and everything else we need to store. There was a book lying around at the crash site called Rob's Introduction into Evaporation. This looked like a kind of skill but that teaches you the basics of the cooler which is something we've already got unlocked. As we had everybody set to construction, they got to work with what wood we had. What I didn't know last episode is that survivors can actually level up their skills. Yes, that's something I had to go and have a little read up on. So the aim for this playthrough is to give them somewhat of a personal role in the group, but as expected we ran out of wood so I had to send Bowman out to spend some time cutting trees, whilst we left Chef and Reynolds to continue on with construction. Then as the first bedroom had a roof on it, it was getting a little late so I decided to put some beds down for them to sleep in. As I think you would agree, nobody likes like sleeping on the floor. Continuing on with the looking after the moods priority though, we also planned in some wall torches along with a bedside table in each room. We also put a dining table in the communal area so they had somewhere to eat. But you can't eat without any food so we needed somewhere to cook and we put the blueprints in for the butcher's room and the cooking room. I did get a little trigger happy on the construction and added another area for the crafter towards the top left and a study to carry out my research. But without knowing and being stuck in my construction mindset everybody was asleep in their rooms. But I continued into the night and put more and more down to construct. Another stockpile which will become the freezer, flooring everywhere and some additions to the bedrooms to make sure they like where they sleep. If you haven't guessed already, I'm really trying to focus on what I think they will like. We paused construction for the time being and focused on tree chopping due to the lack of resources that we had for everything that I'd asked them to do. Food was beginning to become a bit of an issue so we sent Chef out to gather some berries for us. It was just something to get us by and whilst he was out he spotted some locals passing through the area. They didn't stop to chat though. Construction did restart in the evening along with some transport pods landing in the area. I did suspect the hops that they brought were a source of food that I could cook so I marked them to be hauled back to base. I do really like this quick sleeper trait that Mulligan has as she was back up at 4am continuing on with the construction but there was a lot left to do. We were also blessed with a psychic soothe putting a positive spin on the moods for once. It's something I didn't really know existed but I feel like I've been manifesting it this run. On day 4 I left them all just to get on with construction adding in a few more torches to lighten up the place and by 
the time everybody jumped in bed, it was starting to come together. I tried and tried to get one of them to cook the hops that we'd scooped from the pods, but they weren't having any of it. On day five, Bowman was blessed with an inspiration. Again, this one feels like the AI want me to have a good run. Bowman will successfully recruit the next prisoner regardless of who they are. All we need now is someone to recruit. Due to this unexpected blessing, I remembered I needed a prison to begin recruitment, so we made a small hallway for our stockpile and added in a steel prison with two rooms to the east wing of the base. This was one of them things that I knew I needed, but later on it just kind of felt like it was out of place. It was also time to name our faction and our settlement. I don't know about you, but when this pops up, my mind goes completely blank like it actually matters. I probably spent a good 10 minutes just thinking and all I could come up with was the Survivor Pact and Sanctuary. Just a little nod to the Walking Dead. After a few hours, I realised I had an Isle Survivor. Chef had somehow locked himself in the study whilst constructing it, and I hadn't added a door yet. Luckily for him, I do need to be in there, so I added one and let him out in the process. As we headed into day six, pretty much everything was done apart from the prison. We even added some flowers to the bedrooms to add a little bit of beauty. And on a positive note, everybody did seem quite happy. One thing that slipped through the net though was our food supply. We were down to the last 10 meals with no grow zone. So as we learned last episode, we checked the fertility option, but there was nothing close that was great. So we settled for a large patch at the front of the base. By the end of day 7, the prison was in and all that was left to do was put down the floor in the soon to be freezer. Midway through day 8, everything was done, our little sanctuary's foundations were down but this was where the real work starts. Apart from Chef and Bowman finally beginning to plant some food, getting our freezer online next would be the priority. Last episode we used a fuel generator to power it but this time I want to try and use the wind turbines. Again, I've no idea how this works but with most things, it can be worked out. So I placed down two just to be on the safe side and in no time Mulligan had the first one up. I added some hidden conduit from the second turbine and took it towards the kitchen freezer. Again I tried to cut the hops but again no further luck. On what I thought was day 9 we had next to no food so it was time for Bowman to finally go out and hunt. We tagged a few of the animals lurking around the area and Bowman began firing his rifle. I did think it was just a terrible shot at first given he was a 16 skill but it turns out the shots were actually at a squirrel just off my screen. The place was looking a little bit dirty so we made Mulligan do some cleaning and all of a sudden Chef began butchering up the rabbit that Bowman had killed. I also failed to mention that we had a pet cat called Snuffles. Again, like last time, don't get yourself too attached. She does look like she's been in some kind of fight as Mulligan had to use some of our much needed medical supplies on her. Our steel was hard to come by, we planned to deconstruct some of the ruins around the area. And after a day of butchering animals, Chef began cooking for the first time. I did actually think that the three of them were incapable of cooking, but I'm obviously wrong. Bowman was coming in with the goods now whilst he was on the hunt collecting his first big game turkey. So as the meat was coming in, I decided to add in the cooler. And the power plan seemed to have worked as we could see the orange power line coming from the conduit we'd put in a few days ago. At this point, I don't know what day it is, but it went from kind of like the 15th of July to the 1st of August. I do think it's around day 11 though. And it's summer, so you know what that means, parkers are needed for the winter. The second wind turbine finally went in and now I think of it, I don't think I actually ever wired this one up. And we've got a cooler up and running to look after our food. Like last time though, I had to install a second one as it just wasn't doing the job on the large room. I did begin further investigation into Bowman's needs so they could give me some tips on where to improve, but I was quickly interrupted by my first raid from the Ash Pikes. One San who is a wizard construction and in the social game, hopefully someone that will be joining our group very soon due to Bowman's inspiration. One San was preparing for his raid, but there was no time like the present, so I drafted my group and sent them to him. Him. One shot with Bowman's rifle and he went straight down. Not dead though, so he was taken back to the prison ready for recruitment. This time we made sure to check the recruit option was on as well. And we also made sure that Mulligan tended to his wounds to ensure he made it through the night. It wasn't long before we received another notification about another transport pod dropping. This time though, it had a survivor called Stephen from the nation of Natebum. Not the best skills in the world, but that small passion for intellectual gets me a little bit excited. So Bowman went out to collect him and put him in the other jail cell. Day 12 was where our first crisis began. The food shortage was beginning to affect us with no meals stored and just that one bit of whatever it is. This was also added to by a one san getting instantly recruited to the group so the need for food went up again. The gods did bless us with a silver ore vein but for some reason the run hasn't seen a lot of traders coming through. And after the last episode this wasn't a message I wanted to see. A timber wolf decided to hunt Chef. Luckily I used my strategic thinking and pulled Chef the long way around the base out of the wolf's path and drafted everybody behind the imaginary sandbags. There was 
a little bit of a scary moment where the wolf didn't seem like it was going to die, but we knocked it out and allowed Chef to stab it to death. Last episode, this would have been our team down, but this time we had a new recruit and we took down the hunter. Bowman chopped the wolf up straight away as our food supplies were still non-existent. I did realise one Sam needed a bedroom to sleep in, so we planned to do some jiggling around in the workshop area and added in a small bedroom for him. Instantly, the screen began to shake and thunderstorms started. There were numerous fires around the map and at this point, I knew my wooden base was about to go up in flames. Not quite the luck we'd asked for after such a positive start. I'm just kidding though. The fires went out so we lived to fight another day in Rimworld. It was time to send Bowman back out to hunt for food and to be honest, the next few days were a blur due to just trying to get everybody back on board and keep them fed. We put in some mining plans as steel was becoming a hot commodity for building things. Everybody was just eating raw meat but we were met with an exotic goods trader passing through. I did send one son out to do some trading but came to realise he couldn't talk properly because of his poor health. I did suspect this was due to his terrible mood but I later found out that he had a bad spine along with dementia. Gorilla also passed through and was willing to trade so out chef went to check on the goods but in all honesty neither trader had anything we really wanted. The next morning one son was incapacitated due to his horrific mood so the priority was getting chef to get his bedroom finished so we could get him back in bed. After a rough day we finally began cooking some meals from the hunting Bowman had done but all things cooking brought Mulligan close to a major break so she had to be sent off to bed. Luckily our rice plants were ready to harvest so the food issue finally began to dwindle but another animal decided to hunt Mulligan for food. I'm just mentally scared from the wog for every time I get one of these and think it's the end. Luckily Mulligan was close to home though we got the crew drafted and went hand to hand with the lynx. There were some injuries but no deaths which is the main thing. Through the night though one son and our prisoner Stephen ended up with the flu whilst both of our doctors were in bed recovering. Like I said though these few days were just me trying to get by and after a few days of fighting injury and just getting everyone back out on their feet we had another raid from the ash pikes just lonely ex in and her steel club she didn't last long though as bowman and chef took care of business i witnessed my first eclipse bowman began pigging out on food which isn't ideal but then we finally had a bit of good news bowman and mulligan kindled up a little bit of romance after mulligan complimented bowman on her crafting skills so we put the plans in place to create them a shared bedroom i removed the beds from the new couple's bedroom but didn't get the double bed in place in time so Bowman slept in the kitchen and Mulligan slept outside. I did end up waking Bowman up though to finish the bed and then we sent them both into the bed for the first night together. We did end up with another raid from Trosma. For some reason he decided to head inside whilst everybody was outside so we followed him in the door and put him to rest. And we gave one sunny shot both for the future. We were offered the ship to the stars quest again which looks to be in the exact same place as last time so that's something for us to work towards. Then after the chaos of the last few days we put some priority into getting everywhere cleaned up and by the end of the next day the sanctuary was back on its feet with meals in the freezer clean rooms and some happy-ish survivors it's been quite the journey so far in such a small amount of time but believe me when i say there is more to come from this group i'm gonna call this part one of a mini series in the grand scheme of escaping rim world i've been trying to think of a name for the series so let me know if you've got any ideas for me i'm thinking a ship to the stars a beginner's story also i wanted to try and make these videos the best i can so let me know if you feel i'm covering too much in each of the clips i just like to show you the nitty gritty parts but if you feel some of it's not needed just let me know anyway drop a like if you want to see the next part of this mini survival and if you're new here hit the subscribe button so you get notified when the next video is out i'm jpgz good night and goodbye